Hey y'all, and welcome back to Skyrim Scripting. This is episode three of our short five episode series on how to get you set up quickly with a mod authoring setup. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing on getting you set up with a Skyrim creation kit. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is search for the Bethesda launcher and download that for Windows. So here we go. Come on, download, save, run this. My screen might go black for a minute as Windows asks me to click the yes button, which I just did. And now of course we're just going to click through and say yes to everything here. Uh, now give it a moment and the launcher should launch and ask you to log in with Bethesda.net. And here we go. Uh, you, if you don't have an account, can just head on over to Bethesda.net and sign up for one. Uh, it's the same account that Skyrim uses for its internal mod manager, um, which you will get auto logged into once you have the Bethesda launcher installed. Give this a moment and then we'll be able to install the creation kit. All right, this is loaded up. I don't need any update notes. We want to open up this little all games little thing that goes out and uh, we want to look for the creation kit for Skyrim. I don't remember if it does like a black screen here once I click install. Let's go do 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 do. And it's installed successfully. Um, it's going to do two things once we play it. It's going to install a C redistributable something something, and it's then going to ask us about a zip file. Screen went black really quickly while it installed uh, C, and now it's going to ask us about this. Uh, normally I say no and I do this myself, but everyone's going to click yes just automatically, so let's click yes. I know this is going to take a while. It's copying about 15,000 files. It's copying 13,910 script files and a number of dialog view files. I'm just going to pause and let this go as it takes a couple of minutes. And it just finished, which is wonderful. It opens up the creation kit, which may be intimidating and exciting, but we're just going to close out of it for now. Now what we want to do is we want, we want to go to Steam for Skyrim so that we can use it to get to our Steam installation folder. So go to the little cog wheel, manage, browse local files. Uh, now this is a directory that you're going to go to a lot, so I'm going to add this to my quick access. Uh, and additionally, let's put that there, uh, you'll be going to this data folder a lot, which is where all of the mods go. So I'm going to throw that on there as well. Okay, so. Uh, this installed a number of creation kit files here and installed a papyrus compiler and inside of the data folder it installed a source directory. Uh, we need to uh, touch on all of these. We'll go through them one at a time. Uh, go into papyrus compiler and to trigger a .NET 3.5 install just double click on papyrus compiler and download and install this feature. It might do one of those black screens. I'm going to let this install. And now that's installed. Now on to the next step. Uh, we need to register this flowcharts x64 DLL that comes with it. So we're going to hit the Windows key. We're going to type command prompt until it comes up. Right click and run this as administrator. You're going to see a black screen for a second as Windows is asking me to click yes. Now once this comes up, you're going to want to type reg server. And you can hit tab and it'll complete 32.exe. Uh, and we're going to space double quote, and we're going to pass in the full path to that file. You can just grab this path for your Skyrim Special Edition directory from up here. Uh, right click with your mouse, we'll paste in, add another slash, and now just get the name of flowchart x64. You can just type flowchart x64.dll and double quote, and you should see that has now been registered. That's great, we did the DLL, we did .NET 3.5, now all that's left for us uh, for now is this source directory. Uh, now by default, uh, Creation Kit puts all of its uh, uh, 13,910 scripts into source scripts. Well, that's not where modders like them. Modders like them to go into scripts source. So right click anywhere in this folder and make a new scripts directory. Under scripts, make a new source directory. Open that up. And I'm going to control N so I've got two browser uh, to explore windows next to one another. Now from Skyrim Special Edition in data, I'm going to go into that source scripts folder. I'm going to control A to select everything and I'm going to drag it over into our data scripts source folder. 
and I'll let that do its copying. It should start in just a moment. I said copying, but of course it's moving, so it's moving all the files over. After this, we will no longer need that source folder. And that's finishing, moving everything over. So we have data scripts and we have data source. Source should now be empty, so you can get rid of data source. Uh, just a couple things left to do. Uh, first, you're going to want to look for SSC creation kit fixes. Uh, I've got it open up over here. And we're going to want to download this from Nexus. It comes with three DLL files and a uh, INI configuration file. Uh, this will sig significantly improve your experience with the creation kit. By default, creation kit takes over a minute to load up Skyrim, and this will make it run in about 10 seconds. So we're going to manually download both of these files. So we're going to get the uh, creation kit uh, 64 fixes, and we're going to get the face FX wrapper, which is going to help us uh, with our generation of lip files. Head on over to our downloads. And first, uh, we're just going to double click on those CK fixes to open up the zip and uh, go back in another Explorer window to our top level Skyrim Special Edition directory, the directory with Creation Kit and Skyrim SE. And we're going to just copy these things over from the zip. Um, now, if you are a modder, these may conflict, these two files, tbb and tbbmalloc.dll, may conflict with those from the popular mod SSC engine fixes. Now, it's fine. You can overwrite them or keep the SSC engine fixes. Uh, they may be a different uh, file size a little bit, but they're the same and they work for creation kit fixes. Um, as a mod author, I would keep the creation kit fixes, but whatever. Um, and now, as soon as we run creation kit, it will be using those fixes. So next thing we're going to want to create, so click in here somewhere, uh, new text document, and I'm going to change, uh, get rid of that txt extension, call this creation kit custom.ini. And yes, we want to change it to an INI file, and we can just uh, right click on this and choose edit. Uh, now, again, in your search engine, you want to search for uh, Skyrim uh, tweaked creation kit INI. Uh, now this was off of Nexus Mods for a brief period of time, uh, so here on the screen you can see everything that's on that uh, in that file. So you can come back to this video if uh, it gets taken down. But I'm going to go ahead and download it because it's available, and actually because it's available, uh, we won't actually need to create that file manually. Um, so we'll go over here. Uh, I'm just going to delete that one that I made manually, and I'm going to copy over from the zip file, creation kit custom. I made it manually because uh, I've been having to for a while because the mod was down. Um, that does a number of things. The two things that are the most important is it allows creation kit to load multiple master files, which it doesn't by default, uh, and it moves its scripts source directory from source scripts into data script source, the place where we put all of our scripts, which is where Skyrim modders like things to go. And um, uh, finally, we're going to need this uh, phonics data CDF file. So you can just search for phonics data CDF Skyrim. And there's a new Vegas. Um, this actually comes up from New Vegas, which is fine. So we're going to download this. Uh, and you can also find this in a pinned post for um, in the Skyrim Special Edition Creation Kit uh, fixes. You can grab this link and it's the same. Boop. Files, download. Um, this you can actually use a mod manager download if you'd like to. Um, but let's just use a uh, manual download. Okay, let's go through these one at a time. Um, we did the uh, CK64 fixes. Uh, we need the face effects wrapper. Uh, now this has um, some audio tools, and these will go into the top level tools directory in your Skyrim Special Edition. Skyrim Special Edition has a tools folder with audio. Now you're going to need to put this face effects wrapper in here. So now we're done with that piece. Uh, the only other piece is we need the um, phonics data CDF. Um, 
Now that, if we open it up from our downloads folder, that's a 7-zip. That's not nice. I haven't downloaded 7-zip yet because uh, I was going to do that in my uh, episode, so grab 64-bit, where we install various tools. May or may not do a black screen again when I click the installer. And it did. I had to click yes. Now I'm going to click install. This one goes incredibly quickly and it's installed. Now I can go back to that downloads folder. I can right click on that. I've got this little 7-zip menu. If I want to associate it, I can just double click on 7-zip, uh, look for another app on my PC, and in C program files you can find 7-zip and you want this 7-zip uh, FM executable and now it'll open up. Uh, so this is uh, has a processing folder and uh, it will go into our data directory. It will go into the path voice. So I think it'll be data voice um, and then this. I normally already have a voice directory. So do data, let me double check this. Okay, from our data folder, we're going to make a sound folder, um, and then we will make a voice folder, and then in the voice folder, we can copy over this processing folder, and so we will end up with data, sound, voice, processing, phonics data, that will allow us to do uh, lip file generation. Um, now we should be done. Um, I kind of want to open up CK to see if this works, but that's not part of this quick episode series. Uh, we will be doing that momentarily once we uh, hop on over to that next episode and actually get a script editor up and running. So head on over to that video playlist, look for the uh, next one, which should be Visual Studio Code, and I will see you there in just a moment.